Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find us at rebelloveshow.com. Uh, make sure you go like us on iTunes and Stitcher. I am Ron Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today uh, we did have planned the. Uh, we had planned the uh, duo the- of Seditious Sirens. However, you only get one today. I know. Hopefully, your other half. I, I think she sided it with the ice luge, and she's not coming. No. no, no, that's too that, that's too soon, babe. That, that that's too soon. <laughs> that's like man, <laughs> and, and that's sorry, way too sorry, soon. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry. Anyways, um, our guest today is. Uh, my rebel mistress from Seditious Sirens. Hey guys. And uh, filling in for the other half of Seditious Sirens. It's Phoenix. It's Liberty Phoenix. That's all right. I can be a Seditious Siren. He Trust is. me. Just give me about twenty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Get this guy a beer. <laughs> hey. all, right. all right. So we're gonna recap Liberty Forum here. Uh, that is the agenda uh, of today's show. Yeah, first of all, though, it, uh, if you're listening to this on LRN, be sure you, you know you can switch over to rebelloveshow.com slash watch, and you can actually see our beautiful faces. We are broadcasting on YouTube, and you can still participate in the LRN chat room. It's right there on the page. So that's fun. Yo, yeah, get on the – go watch us live on, uh, on our own website. That'd be cool. So uh, – but you'll probably listen to us in your ears in a podcast anyways. <laughs> uh, so Liberty Forum, Liberty Forum happened throughout this weekend. Uh, I was excited about it. It was fun. Uh, we recorded, we recorded three episodes of Rebel Love Show there, which was, I'll be honest, that was way too much work. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh my God. You over, you over. We overextended yeah. ourselves. Like we wanted to have a serious presence there though, you know, because we're like a cool new show and we've been working really hard on this and we wanted to make sure everyone at Liberty Forum you know, got to see us in action. Yeah, and then on, t- on top of that, I remember years past listening to podcasts that were at uh, Liberty Forum and like, what's going on there? Who are these people there? What's what's it like? So I really wanted to put some content out from uh, Liberty Forum for people who haven't moved yet. What What was your favorite show the last time you were at Liberty Forum? What was the biggest show there? Oh, the, well, last time I was at Liberty Forum or mm-hmm. the last podcast year. I listened to before I was at a Liberty Forum? No, I mean at Liberty Forum. Last who, year, who was the like the person? Who well, was... the biggest the biggest show that was at Liberty Forum, hands down, last year was Off the Air Live because I co-hosted that because <laughs> he was on it. <laughs> so oh, I mean, that had to God. be the biggest show. I, last I actually year. did sit and watch that too. Was, was it as awesome as he thinks? <laughs> the first one was. The second one wasn't. Oh. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool seeing the uh, seeing Rob uh, on a show like that and in action, you know. And I actually, I had listened to Off the Air Live, too, before coming to Liberty Forum. That was my first time in New Hampshire, so I was geeking out, out about it, you know. Well, you know, it's not that hard to get on Off the Air Live. Yeah, I, mean, I just did it by just calling in every single night. <laughs> that, that's, how, that's actually how I did the same thing uh, with that one last year. I used to be a caller Skype-wise uh, to uh, Off the Air Live a few times. That was one of my favorite things about Cody, though. You know, he'll just let you get on there and ramble, and if you're good, he'll just... He won't. He'll, he'll agree with you, and then if you're bad, he'll be like, "Yes." Speaking of Cody, do you want to? We'll, we'll save this for a different segment, but I want to go on a rant about them. We'll save that for later. <laughs> Keep tuned because we're going to go on a rant about Cody O'Connor because uh, well, well, you'll find out. Um, but so yeah, Liberty Forum recorded three episodes. Uh, we uh, we did our party. I did two talks with the artist formerly known as O Girl, uh, Shire Dude here filmed like a whole Shire season. <laughs> no, right. no, I, I got. I was trying to film a Shire Dude episode at Liberty Forum, and the problem is, I, I found this uh, to be the case. People just aren't as fun at Liberty Forum as they are at, at Pork Fest. You what? mean you didn't get like three Shire years of Shire Dude Shire mm. shows and Shire footage? No, I Stop. do. I do have enough to complete the final episode of the first season, though. <laughs> All right. I wish you could have attached good. a GoPro on my head because my experience at Liberty Forum was awesome, well, wild and crazy. Well, yes, babe, you had a camera. I did have a on camera. On your phone. You could just take it out. And... Uh, it was just so random all the time. I was like in different places every time I turned around and everyone was always trying to smoke with me. And it was just like, I was sending you selfies from like just a random car. Like, where are you now? I don't know. It was a fun time. She has. <laughs> time. You know what's crazy? She now has the Rich Paul effect to where, you know, people don't want to take like autographs or like uh, Brett Vanat and Carlos were talking about how like all people who know her, know them, all they want to do is complain about their life, about like how, <laughs> how bad it was in school or how, the, you know, their life was ruined by CPS. Uh, 
And here, she's she got the rich Paul effect. She's just gonna uh, <laughs> smoke with anyone that comes up with us. I would like to think of myself as the female rich Paul, but you know, rich Paul is still my idol. He's my mentor, man. Um, I am now a high priestess of the Church of the Invisible Hand. Go like them on Facebook. How did how did you become a high pre- priestess? Because of my good peace and love vibes that I send off to people. So you know, I should be an advocate for four twenty. I feel like it's my calling. It's your calling. It's to my be a- calling to you know spread love and cheer and marijuana. You took place in a uh, four twenty <laughs> rally when we were recording, didn't you? Yeah, we were yeah, recording. We were recording. You left. Then you came back. Say we w- you went to a four twenty, or it was a so good you don't remember? Oh yes, that did Saturday. happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, that was a uh, yeah Saturday. Well, you know, no, Saturday, there's Sunday. so many four twenty rallies Sunday. at Liberty Forum, and you know, Porkfest is just one huge. 420 rally Any, anything oh, can yeah. be Liberty activism that's, that's what that's what i love about this community like we're just sitting around and then someone's like okay it's almost 420 let's go smoke some cannabis outside let's all can like and then we went and passed out flyers i don't know if it was at 420 no we didn't pass out flyers at four are you talking about with when we passed out, when flyers? We passed out flyers oh no that was um that was around noon we went to the women's expo there was another convention, so we decided to go pass out 420 flyers and tell everyone to come to the state house and smoke a joint with us and <laughs> protest prohibition. That was funny that there's <laughs> at the Radisson there was multiple different expos going on besides Liberty Forum, and on a Saturday there was a uh, a women's uh, expo, and I remember we walked in. I was open carrying the whole t- the whole weekend. So uh, we walk in from the parking garage and we're walking in because, you know, we're not staying at the hotel. We live two blocks away. Why are we going to get, you know, spend the night there? And uh, when I'm walking in, all of a sudden I'm surrounded by people all dressed in pink and purple that are older <laughs> women. And I'm like, what, what is going on? We're... Posters for Botox everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it felt crazy walking by like uh, something like 100 people at one point. when It was really packed when I walked through in the morning. And it was a little surreal. Like, you know, norm- I was used to walking around, open carrying around all these libertarians and anarchists and shit like that. And all of a sudden, now I'm walking in front of like probably if I'm if I'm going to stereotype, most of these people probably weren't, you know, very liberty minded. I would imagine. How did they react? I got a couple dirty stares, but I don't think most people even noticed. To be perfectly honest. Uh-uh. What kind of reaction would you have preferred if from? I would have preferred who are people coming. Mind. Um, of a non liberty mind, mm-hmm. I would have, I would have pre- well, if they're had if they're of not a liberty mind, they but they had an open mind, they at least come up and ask me, hey, you know, is there a reason why you're open carrying or something like that? So I didn't have a dialogue. That'd be kind of a cool. Uh, but reaction. didn't you um didn't you try to talk to someone about um open carrying? Wasn't it Carla's niece? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was shocked. I think that was the first person she uh, that she saw there that was open carrying. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carla had me do a twirl in front of her niece. Uh, the show that was open carrying that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, that was actually really cool. But th- that was actually the first time I've really open carried in public before. It was a fascinating like journey. I don't know. That's first time. Yeah, I can't wait to get it. I can't wait to get a gun. I definitely want to take more lessons. We need to take more lessons, and we need to, we need to do it together. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when I get a gun, you get a gun. You're Same definitely time. better than me. Am I? <laughs> He's got more experience. Not much. Mm. much. About as a shot or open carrying. No, I mean uh, shooting. Oh, shooting! Yeah. I thought you said like better at like open carrying. No, I'm I'm just never, about I'm handling never guns. I'm, my mind's in the gutter. Jesus. Oh yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I did open carry. That was fun. Uh, mm-hmm. but uh, for oh. Well, well, the 420 rally, we'll talk about that with, uh, about what happened uh, when we went to it. Yeah, on the break, you can go to the Shire Dude Facebook page and check out the video of the 420 rally on Friday. I yeah, wasn't at we that live streamed it, folks. They missed my show for that one. Seditious Sirens. People. It was worth it. Like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. We were recapping 
the uh, Liberty Forum that we just uh, experienced here. And uh, we haven't talked about the Rebel Love Show party, but I kind of want to save that because apparently Renee's coming. She is coming. She's on her way. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, while we have Liberty Phoenix on, uh, can we talk a little bit about him? Like where he Absolutely. came from? Absolutely. Just kind of plop down yeah. into our show. You, you've had a, a crazy journey, uh, especially people following you on uh, Facebook. It's been an adventure for you. I love it when new movers come in here and they come in trails blazing. I love that. All right. So you you definitely impressed me with your move. Uh, so f- let, let's hear what your last week has been like. Well, you know, I've only got four months to spend up here, so. My activism has to be targeted, it has to be direct, it has to be focused. And um, I was thinking about maybe trying to do like 120 days of activism or something to that effect. Or, you know, Liberty Phoenix's victimless crime spree. Yeah, man. That would take too long because then I'd, I wouldn't be able to get out of jail soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's been wonderful because then the, this community is so easy to get tapped into do any kind of activism and uh, a lot of people like to say oh if, if it's filmed it's activism or to, to downplay certain levels of activism but once you get up here and you get more assimilated into the actual community because people can describe the community they can tell you about it but you can't ever know what it is until you get here and right. experience it yeah. um, you, you you won't really have any idea of the act the ability for real change for someone that is dedicated to it um, they can make great things happen. Would you say? Would you say it's a level of, of unity that is a little bit more evolved than everywhere, everywhere else, <laughs> as far as the liberty community goes? I would have to agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's 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 an there's an evolution in the unity between all of the individuals within this community. It's it is it's amazing. And, and speaking, of course, of unity evolved. Tell me about that. Um, well, unity evolved is um, this once a week podcast that I do now from a frozen RV trailer, which was fun. <laughs> Um, but you're like a dashing young uh, Ben Stone. <laughs> well, don't undersell it. Now, it hasn't this been? Hasn't Unity evolved? Uh, been going on longer than Rebel Love Show? It Am I correct in that? May have been. No, I no, think no. it was March of start? last year. March of last year was our first show on Ooh, the very we, very first show. We technically on started YouTube, in October of the previous year, but we really didn't start it here in the Shire until the first week of April. Well, we didn't start it here in the Shire until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I got you beat then. <laughs> That's cool, though. That's cool. And uh, yeah, what, what's that show like, man? Um, well, it's it's changed a lot of. It's gone through a lot of different f- phases. Um, it started out just me um, getting inspired by Free Talk Live and being like, you know what? I have a lot to say. I realized I kind of like hearing my own voice, so why not do my own damn little show? And so I started emptying out area in my basement. It was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And this guy just hits me up on Facebook. Hey, are you the Liberty Phoenix that always calls into Free Talk Live? Mm-hmm. My little claim to fame, you know, <laughs> um, claim to annoyance. But Free Talk Live. You you call into every <laughs> LR Red Liberty oriented podcast that takes phone calls, sir. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, That's pretty so, cool. I'm but, not. Hey, I'm not knocking that you did. You just gotta don't don't sell yourself short. I, you just don't hold back on Free Talk. Can Live. I say something yeah. about Liberty Phoenix? That most people who say people are always call in and comment. They say, oh, they're annoying. When you say Liberty Phoenix is calling in, people are like, oh, that dude's awesome. Mm-hmm. So that says a lot about you. <laughs> I, I do like that feeling. I mean, it, it's nice to get validated, but I'd prefer for more of my friends and family to listen to the words that I have to say and then take heed of that because that's, that's my ultimate target is my friends and family, to get them to move up here, to experience this, to, to realize that the illusion of authority is just that, an illusion. Isn't that kind of a, a strange feeling that... Um, like a stranger will come up to you at Porkfest and stuff and be like, Liberty Phoenix, oh, I love your stuff. And your own like family and like longtime friends, you have to like drag them through the mud to get them to listen to your content. Well, they, that's because they're your friends and family. <laughs> they know all the dirty little secrets and backgrounds that, that you have. They know exactly who you are as opposed to the public persona that you show people. Mm. So they have, a, they have their own more honest view, I suppose. Hmm. Of exactly who you are, so they know where you're BSing and where you're not. It, it makes it harder to target them. Plus, you all, you can always hurt your family. You know, they always say that you hurt you hurt the ones you love. Yeah. You know, we treat them the the worst, but it should completely be the opposite. But um, so that that makes it a little bit easier for them to, you know, reject what it is that you're saying. Did you go through that phase when you're coming through the ideas of liberty, like? Where you you just try to have gotcha moments with everyone, and you try you try to get in arguments. Yeah, I still do that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons. Like that was another reason why I came up here because I feel like the way that I transmit the message of liberty, you know, on an individual basis is 
really, really terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more than positive that I can improve that, and uh, that's that's what it's all about. Really, is an evolution of humanity, you know, evolving the way we think about ourselves and the way we interact with other people. Nice. Okay, my I gave you this advice off air. I'm going to do it on air. I love your enthusiasm. Oh my god, I can't get enough of it. Just you got remember, just take a moment. All right, it took you a long time to get here. All right, all I'm saying is take a moment, smell the roses, take a day to chill, maybe a few days, maybe a week, just chill out, relax for a little bit while you're here. I don't think how was uh, Liberty Forum for you because it was my first one, and it, was it your first one or have you been before? Yeah, it was my first Liberty Forum, um, and you know I didn't really go to any of the talks or any of that stuff. It was more interacting with the community that I focused on, um, and. As far as that went, I, I really enjoyed like it. like a true mover. <laughs> no, seriously, like Liberty Forum, uh, you know, Liberty Forum was great. Uh, I went to my talks and my my stuff, but uh, and I went not to mine. A, I watched most of your show, but when when Rich Paul wants to go do a four twenty rally, <laughs> like goddamn, I'm gonna go out there and smoke pot. All right, um, <laughs> sorry, babe. I forget. <laughs> you me. did the same thing to me the day before. <laughs> I did. I it's did. hard to turn down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but. Uh, I, before I moved, I always wanted to like, I want to go to that talk and this talk. I want to see that. I want to hear this person speak. I was all about that. And I, was, I thought it would be the same way with Pork Fest and stuff like that too. And my, la- my, por- uh, my first reform last year, I did the same thing. I, I told myself I was going to go to a bunch of talks, but I didn't. I just hung out. I, uh, I, uh, I spent the time in the community just hanging out, having fun with people. Because a lot of times these, these conferences are really just uh, – that's when everyone that you know is all together at the same time for a short for a short weekend or whatnot. It's like for those that don't have a full grasp or, or don't feel that they have a complete grasp of the message and the and the philosophy of liberty. That's what the talks and and the shows and the, and the events are for. Yes, for mm-hmm. the people that get it, the, for the people that live here, it's just a family reunion. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Like I had to restrain myself. I had to tell everyone. Look, guys, it's just Thursday. We can't get blackout <laughs> drunk. We have to, we have to pace ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it was, it was fun. Like every single day, I woke up and it was like, are, yeah, are you gonna be able to pace yourself for pork fest? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna go all out on pork fest. Oh, go yeah. full pork fest. I'm gonna go full pork fest. Someone's gonna find me in the woods, just like. Stuck are you there. gonna, are you gonna be founding your own church at pork fest? Uh, yes, the church of Anne, <laughs> or the church of the mistress. Hmm, how do I become a high uh, priestess of this church? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, the high priestess. Oh, man. Well, we'll find out how to become a high priestess of Anne's church when we get back. Sorry about that, YouTube. We, we just had a learning experience. This is a learning hospital, after all. <coughs> hey, can, uh, can we switch to, on YouTube, can we switch to um, their camera? Hey, YouTube, I want to show you something for being so patient with us. Uh, I did this earlier today. Let me see. <laughs> It's the Shire, dude. All right, I'm a crazy person. That looks nothing like Shire, dude. It's totally Shire, dude. Shire, dude's not ginger. Yeah, he should get. Oh, the logo is ginger, though. Oh. I never noticed your logo was ginger. How did you not connect? I kind of don't like it anymore. Gingers don't have souls. She doesn't want to be a part of the Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and for all of our lovely viewers on YouTube uh, who are watching this again live, we had some tech issues just earlier. It's a learning hospital, folks. Um, 
the uh, Renee Kate. What, what's your handle on Salacious Signs? I keep forgetting. Renee Kate Freelove. Freelove. How do you forget? It's what Ren- do you think this Dude, is? Dude, it's Renee it's, Kate it's Freelove. Four names. No, it's four names. It's Renee Stop Cake it. Freelove. Stop yeah. it. Cake. Stop it. Because she gives free cake you're and love. To, you're supposed yeah. to bring a cake today. I know. You uh, you show here late. You don't even bring us treats. <laughs> All right. First off, I want to let I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let Sidisha Sirens handle this little late issue. We're gonna we're gonna hash it out. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. It's well, we, fine. We also At have... least she came. I know. I'm all. If, if she didn't come, it, I would have cried. It, it, it really hurt our feelings hurt more defense. than anything when it she didn't show up. We weren't angry. We were hurt. <laughs> Oh, it's God. not just she runs on libertarian time. It's that it's she's always on libertarian time. She's I think, always. I think she gets her time. own time zone. Yeah, like, it's Renee cake time. You just show up whenever you damn well please. I love I cake mean, time. It's inevitable that I'll show up. It's just. I don't know. I doubted you today, man. I didn't know. Wow, really? No, Come she on was now. worried. She was like. Pacing left and right. Right, That's she was ridiculous. doing flips. It was crazy. I know yeah. you missed me, but I know you took that quality time to talk some shit. So, well, we had uh, <laughs> we we had uh, Liberty Phoenix here jump in and fill in for you. So. Yeah, Thanks. and he did awesome. a good job. He's gonna be. He's you're still gonna be on next week, right? He that, deserves yeah. his own his dang own episode. Damn episode. Yeah, because he's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, anywho, I wanted to clear the air. Because it's been talked about on multiple different uh, shows. Unless this is like deep, deep conspiracy, in which if it's this deep, I don't even I don't want to believe it. Um, but that being said, I've accused Shire Dude of plenty of times of being Ian Googling. <laughs> all right, um, go on. Now, mind you, maybe someone else made this Facebook page, but uh, Ash's uh, Facebook page for Ash the Studio Cat. Uh, who's the producer of this show, apparently? Uh, Ian Googling just like that. So, And you were sitting right next to me. Ian Googling, which is a brand new Facebook page. Well, yes. my my theory is him and Cecilia are working together. So this really... So you no. think Cecilia, no. you think Cecilia just liked Ash, the I studio cat, no, as no, Ian Googling? Just I, think Ash the studio cat. I think it's Jay. I think it's Boner Joe. You think it's Jay? Yep. What are your reasons? What is your evidence? Yeah. You gotta well, have evidence. Apparently, he let out some... Uh, gamer tweet that only Ian Johnson and he would know. So, or or Johnny Ray, I don't know. And, or Renee. It was like an inside joke. No, because I don't even remember what the freaking tweet is. Dude, I wish I were that funny. And it's Jay's type of humor. I think it's Jay. I know it's Jay. Jay, come out, come out. I got okay. you. But anyway, yeah, the, the reason that this proves that I wasn't Ian Googling is because he liked the page when I was sitting right next to Rob. Yeah. And I okay. wasn't on yeah. my phone. And then Rob was like, wait a minute, don't, don't touch your phone. And then he wanted me to turn on the phone and go to Facebook, which clearly showed that. And I actually scrolled through the pages <laughs> that I have access to and showed him I don't have access to this page. So it could not have been me. There's no way. Well, you didn't like my page. It doesn't mean you weren't tweeting it. But he's not, he's not in Googling the Facebook page. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never trust you. Yeah, him. no. Once your cons- <laughs> once your conspiracy theory involves like a bunch of people, but in you're on the it. one telling me that, so I can't. I, you're not a reliable source of information. <sighs> yeah, um, I gotta trust my instincts. Anyway, we didn't ask Renee Cake Free oh. Love. God damn it! Knock <laughs> it off. <laughs> how, how her Liberty Form yeah. was? How, how how was Liberty the, Form? The the you? part you actually showed up for. Uh, I know because she Cause was like, she was two days late to Liberty Form. I was yeah, freaking I know. sick. Excuse you, like, and it's all your fault. Who the hell did it? No, 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 no. It's your damn fault that I was sick. But so. how is it her fault how that you're it sick? My because fault. she do we, shows up just, at my Do we place. make out in, like, the bathroom or oh, something? That would be voluntary. No. Yeah. See, but you not, up, no making out heaven. You show no up, exchanging. You of show fluids. up up in my house. You're wearing my <laughs> shoes. You're coughing all over everything. See, it sounds like you got Rob sick yeah. too. If you cough on someone, is that aggression? Is that is microaggression? That aggression? Um... I don't know. Like, if you cough, like, directly in their face without covering your mouth, is, you is take, that aggression? If you take the rebel mistress to an all-vegan breakfast buffet, is that aggression? Oh, my God. What's your, what's your beef up. with vegan food? She's just a hater. You live with me. What's I, your I, beef? I, I, all the time. I, she's a hater. <laughs> <laughs> what's your beef, yo? Uh, she's a hater, uh, dude. Beef? She's a hater. There seems to be a lot of that flowing around Facebook these days. Oh. Beef? Yeah. Beef, yes. Lots of beef. There's All beef tr- patties. Quite a bit of beef flowing around Facebook. This Here, is true. I'll break it. Kurt, you're a fucking asshole. Oh, damn. Oh. All right, you just Whoa. Jumped, you just, 
That was well, that was. I told you guys we didn't sign a disclaimer. Yeah, we're. This is, you have to you say this your sirens on your show. There you, you should, go. If you want to take care of it, you don't have you to just, say. You just it. jump to you. the end. You just jump all the I way mean, to the end. Anne already mentioned the ice luge like second sentence into the show. So <laughs> I mean, do you guys want to get into it? Because I feel like it's just the big elephant I, in the room. It was it going there. The it was going there. I mean, okay, like, so let's not beat around the bush. The ice has been broken. Before we go into it. Okay, so the party. Let's talk about the party. The Rebel Love Show Party was a great success. It was Everyone a fantastic was having success. So much fun, dancing, getting so it drunk. It was the reason to go to Liberty. Oh, uh, it was the reason. It, even the chef was taking shots with us. And then we go to sleep and we wake up at 8 a.m. to a, a fucking thread. <laughs> about <laughs> threat is such a dirty word uh, <laughs> yeah. it's just gross well apparently um, uh, i am now listed as a uh a slave master within the community <sighs> yeah. i mean i don't even know if we should read the thread but basically i mean andrew had a great summation oh do you did you do the first thread or the second thread because there were two threads there were yeah, three the, fir the first one was no technically there were four but the first set of threads wasn't <laughs> enough drama for his liking, so he had to <laughs> follow it up with a second post because he wasn't. Yeah, we, we should give but this we, backstory we need to some. We know that Todd Rowe was a good guy. <laughs> we, we should <laughs> give this backstory some filler for the yeah. people who have no idea what we're talking about. Um, what happened was Rob and I decided to hire a caterer for the Rebel Love Party, an agorist caterer, yes. obviously. Who has um, been known for agorist catering in the past. And accepting Bitcoin. It would have been perfect for the party. And uh, I've, I've had his food before, actually, at last year's Liberty Forum. Uh, well, we left Liberty Forum and went to his place. Yeah, that's when he first started doing that. Yeah, yeah and he was cooking. Anyway, uh, so we both res really respected this guy. And we went over to his place. Uh, we had a really nice uh, in-person meeting. And we talked about, uh, I think it was like a 10% fee. Uh, we, everyone that was at the Quill that was selling any kind of liquor, the, food, all the agorists, all to, the agorists yeah. there, uh, we took everyone took a we took a ten percent cut off the top. Uh, that was it, like their entry fee to sell and make a profit. There. Right, and it's something that we put back into the Rebel Love Show. So yeah, the party was kind of a equipment. fundraiser for the Rebel Love Show. Yeah, right. And so we're uh, we're talking with them at their place, and they pitch us on this ice luge. Right, which if you don't know, an ice luge is like a big block, a big slab of ice that's kind of, um, it's got like a, a tunnel through it from one end to the other. You pour alcohol on the first end and someone's waiting with their mouth on the ice at the second end and they take a shot and the ice get, the ice makes the alcohol nice and cool. And uh, it's it's pretty legit. It's like a cool kind yeah, of party really gimmick. Really unsanitary. It's a luge. <laughs> yeah, very unsanitary. I wouldn't go near that thing. But it's fun. But anyway. So. Um, <laughs> anyway, they pitch us on the ice luge. We leave the party. With a, uh, you know, and the meeting, or the, the, yeah, meeting. we leave the meeting with a. We're gonna get back to you guys on the luge because they said they quoted us originally at two hundred dollars. They did. They, the, in the in the thread, he's saying one hundred and fifty. He quoted well, us at two hundred. Plenty of inconsistencies. Yeah, yeah. He's they quote us at two hundred dollars, and I'm two, thinking two hundred dollars for a block of ice in New Hampshire. Yeah, in New Hampshire of all places, it's got to be really cheap to you know ship stuff that's supposed to be cold, right? Yeah. Motherfucker, I could walk outside <laughs> and sculpt the ice by myself. In the front of the quill, yeah. And, and first of all, this ice sculpture that he described... He described a uh, <laughs> the way he described it was was a, a sculpture. A, an actual a logo would be sculpted out of the ice itself, not and etched in a, a triangle on the on a side. Yeah, and it was going to have like uh, its own lighting. Inches. Yeah, it was supposed to have its own lighting Which it didn't. and everything. But that's not that here nor there, to be perfectly honest. In the end of it, we because said we'll get day, back we, to you. Yeah, we did say we're going to get back to you. And then we didn't. And, of course, um, uh, he comes to us the, the day before the party and says, Hey, guys, your ice luge is almost ready. We'll, we'll finish that when we get back. After this, yeah. Back to the Rebel Love Show and uh, with Sedition Sirens here, coming back with us too. Oh, hey. hey. Oh, 
So we were, we left off the last commercial break. Normally we never pick up where we left off because we kind of forgot what we were talking about. But this is an important Yeah, shit. so I'm, we're still going to remember what we, where we left off at. Um, anyway, so we left off the meeting. Uh, we never ordered a nice loosh. And then uh, this meeting, oh. by the way, was in like January. Yeah, it was like mid-January when this took place. This was so maybe like two months later. Two, it, was, it was two months beforehand, yeah. The day before the or the night before the party... Uh, our caterer tells us Kurt Thomas. Kurt, yeah, Kurt tells us that uh, the ice luge is gonna be ready that we never ordered. Yeah. Um, and Rob's like, oh, we never he, ordered he one. He insisted on having a last minute meeting right before the party. Right. Yeah, we were having fun, and you were like, I gotta go to this meeting, and I'm like, right. So, yeah. so we uh, we're, we we uh, head over to you know like a room. And we sit down, and uh, Rob's like, we never ordered it. And Kurt's like, well, I have it. And then at that instant, I came up with a, a proposition, a solution. A great idea. And I was like, look, how about you just bring the loose to the party since it's already made, right? It, you know, it's already a done deal. Like, you made the luge. Um, how about you bring it to the party and you keep 100% of the profits from the ice luge and then you try to recoup that cost? He was excited about that. He, he shook our he hands. He shook our hands. He like, shook both of our hands. Immediately, like, shook our hands. Like, oh, that's a great idea. All like, smiles. All yeah, smiles. You just freeze frame right there. So what you're saying is he consented. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, what's what's his handshake worth? Apparently, you know. Jack. Not as much, not as, much as I thought it was. Because then the morning after the party, he leaves an extremely lengthy well, thread. Well, no, before that, before we get to that part, there's more to this story. Yeah, I don't want to go into too much. I mean, well, no, 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 no. I, the only detail yeah. I want to go into is that he was excited throughout the entire party. He shook both our hands multiple times throughout the party. His, uh, th his partner, Todd Rowe, who apparently is threatening me with violence to him, uh, shook my hand as well. He was super excited and jazzed at the party. Uh, and Kurt, he tell you Kurt was so thing? excited that when the uh, when the ice loose was there, he insisted that me and him christen it. Um, I posted a photo of that in that thread that he actually insisted on doing that, that he was happy to do that. Um, he was happy the entire night. Yeah. All right. Right. Which he'll he'll tell you he'll just chalk up to professionalism. Oh, I was just doing my. But, but how is but that professionalism says, when at eight in the morning, instead of him, I don't know, having some sort of communication with us, which never happened. He never communicated any of this um, to us whatsoever. There was no reach out to us, not a text message, a Facebook um, thing, or even during a party, like, hey, he could have just came up to us, like, hey, I kind of feel like I was wrong. Can we talk about this at another time? Nothing like that. He never approached us with any kind of communication whatsoever until 8 in the morning on a Sunday where he makes multiple posts about us. And this is the part that pisses me off because this means that throughout the night, he was completely fucking fake. And I was like, wow. This is a nice guy. Like, sure, I'll write a little thing on your whiteboard to yeah. help promote your food or whatever. Because you seem like a really nice guy, and your food's really good. Good guy. And on, Just kidding. On top, on top of that, he also complained about how like automatically we're posting photos and like showcasing it. I'm trying to help him sell liquor at that party, yeah. so I'm doing this advertisement from. I want to post it on the party wall, like on you know, like I was trying to promote the idea of people going there to get shots during that throughout the party. I was telling people go get shots from Kurt. Even right. uh, you were yeah. selling. I, I I actually I was selling some stuff of my own and people. Uh, <laughs> People were talking about the luge, and I was like, "Well, if you want the luge stuff instead, you know, like, it, you know, go over here, talk to this guy." And I pointed out um, Todd, who was helping Kurt cater. Yeah, and what he said specifically was, "You made him a slave." Yes. At his party, so I mean, I don't know what was going well, through his head or his mind when he said this, but what I, the way I see it, as he agreed to take 100% of the profit. That was his choice. When he found out he didn't make a profit. Then it was like, oh nope, I've been wrong. How did he not make a profit? He that's the other thing. Well, he sold like four or five plates at least to everyone there at like ten bucks each. We don't know whether or not he made a profit on the kitchen, um, but the ice well, luge to me didn't look like he recouped two hundred dollars. Well, one hundred and fifty according to the, the or threat. however much worth of ice. It didn't look like that. Now another thing is he never paid us that ten percent either from the kitchen. From the kitchen. So not only um, is he trying to bat, uh, you know. This, uh, drag our reputation through, through the mud. He's also stealing from us. Every other person yeah. that sold there put in their 10%. Yeah, they've exactly. all paid. And you don't see the you writing the status. Kurt has wronged me, and my best friend Shire Dude is an awesome person. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't see that thread from, like, no. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If you have, I've, okay, I'm not going to release publicly other, um, 
issues that have happened between me and other people in this community. That being said, it was resolved in a private manner. All right. I, you don't, the, I'm not against going public. Cause this is kind of the only, the bigger reason why I really want to talk about this because it really gives you an idea of, you know, we always talk about how we don't want the state, but how are we going to handle differences when there is no state? Um, and there's protocol, I, I guess you can say that you can, you should follow uh, in regards to having any kind of issues with another person. First, you try to reach out to them. Uh, you try to make things right before that. And if that doesn't work, if that doesn't work, you try and seek mediation. You find a... Well, arbitration and mediation will only work if we know... Right. If one side knows that there is evidence. Right. And this was only word of mouth. This was only our word versus his. Yes. We had no messages between us. We met in person. We had no written anything between us. Yeah. There, we met in person and there was. No... So arbitration would have been a waste of everyone's time. Yeah, that's true. That w At least we would have came to like the other discuss. option is to duel him. But I, I, I don't want to duel him. Well, I mean, I would have been I would have been in favor of uh I, mean, I would have been in favor, though, of him he, talking to us like an adult. Talking to us first. He, we could have came to some sort yeah, of conclusion. He didn't take any kind of personal responsibility. Like, how can you guys make him a slave if he didn't like anything that was going on? It's not professionalism to let someone make you a slave. Unless it, making that money that night is the most important thing in the world. Well, Why yeah. would you become a slave? If I don't like something, I'm not going to let you tread on me. So I don't understand why he would just let you... If he had he a lot of like money something. at stake in the in the food, if he, if, just if he away. really if I'm like playing it. devil's advocate, if I'm playing devil's if advocate, if he would have made a profit, this ne this conversation never would have happened. Let, let me let me say something real fast here. Like we're at the meeting, the first initial meeting at his house, right? Now let's say that someone said like like Kurt said, "Hey, so you want to buy the ice solution?" Or, uh, you know, blah blah blah, and he like mumbled it, and we mumbled something back, and somehow our wires crossed the wrong way, and we heard. We'll talk to you later about it. And he heard, yeah, sure, we'll buy it enthusiastically, right? Let's say that both of us actually made eyewitness errors, right? Which is totally possible uh, because yeah. eyewitness testimony is like the worst testimony. It's been proven in multiple studies, all right? Even then, he should have talked to us before going the nuclear option and posting it on Facebook. Yeah. I agree. The posting on Facebook is the nuclear option. That's if only all communications fail. Um, I, I don't really see Phil. I was he shocked by it. I was honest. I was he didn't like the result, so he got angry. I he was, consented, though. That's the end of the, the discussion. I was honestly shocked. Like, I didn't see it coming. You know, uh, normally something like that, like you have communications multiple times, there'll be negotiations and somehow making things right or anything like that. None of that happened whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's shocking that he did that. I'm absolutely shocked. I thought he was a credible, upstanding guy. And the moment there's any kind of issue, his, his idea is instead of talking to the person he has an issue with, going public and letting everyone in the community know. That's ridiculous. That's why yeah. I think this guy's such a jerk is because he was so nice and friendly to your face. But then the next morning just turns on you. Yeah. What the hell? Like, that is my, one of my biggest pet peeves is fake fucking people. Because if there's one thing that you can count on me for, it's honesty. Like, no matter what, I'm going to tell you straight up yeah. how I'm feeling. That's Even true. if you're not going to like it, yeah. I'm going to tell you what's up. Just watch an episode of Seditious Sirens yeah. if you doubt right. that for a we, second. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> yes, say that, that he had to walk away from the food because, of course, that would be ridiculous. But if he didn't like something about it, you guys could have worked out a different deal. He could have said, no, I don't want to take 100% of the profits. Like, I'm not okay if you pay me. I'm no. sure you, you guys would have worked out I probably would have gave him a break on the 10% exactly. or something along those lines. And then he lines. also yeah. said, we're missing this key point, that the ice luge wasn't what you expected. So he would have gave you oh, a discount. If, if we had ordered that, which we didn't if we had ordered it there's no way i would have paid 200 for that that wasn't even close to what he he described and it wasn't like any kind of communication in designs or anything like that oh it, right so there's that point too is if we actually did agree to pay for it uh it wasn't anything like we'd expected so it would have been fraud right yeah it would have been a fraudulent transaction i would he literally he described it as the logo being well carved todd out. i believe was the one who was really describing yes it. yeah yeah and he said it would have been a significant discount if you were going to pay. But if it all totaled out and he didn't make a profit, what would he would have earned from that? 20 bucks or something? Maybe. At the end of the day, Shardu said this on Facebook. I want to agree <laughs> before we head out. We didn't move to the Shire to fraud someone out of a $150 piece of ice. <laughs> Seriously, folks.
There's enough ice in New Hampshire. <laughs> in Iceland's by bi- bi- from Manchester, New Hampshire. It's the top of the hour, and uh, we're talking about lib reform. We got the seditious sirens here on board with us. Finally, okay. the, the whole kit and caboodle here. And, uh, Shari, do you want to talk about another incident that happened during lib reform that wasn't pleasant? Yeah, um, I don't want to go into, like, all the super-duper detail, but... Um, because the feds are listening? <laughs> they, they might be listening. I don't know. So give them something to- who cares? <laughs> well, I mean, these two specific feds. So there were these two people um, at Liberty Forum. Uh, they were in the Alt Expo suite at one point. They were in the, like the hotel lobby at one point, and they were at the Quill at one point. And, and in each of these instances, they were like harassing people, every, like annoying people. Every single person. See, I I don't want to believe the worst in everyone, but every single person these two seem to come across. They had a negative experience. Not one, not two, but every single person. Yeah, it was really weird. Like, and we it, um, after after Liberty Forum was really when when everyone kind of heard about it, because um, there were a few posts in certain groups, and everyone kind of came forward with their stories. Like we'd all been like molested during Liberty Forum. <laughs> yeah, every and every person that came forward, except for like where they originally stayed, was not pleasant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they now, they, mind you, they were staying at Stone Farm. Now, mind you, they could they could have had. Uh, I mean, they're new. Every time new people come in here, they they uh, they trip over themselves a little bit, you know. Yeah, but, but I've never seen a, a train. Wreck. I've never trip. seen a train wreck like this before. Yeah, yeah. This this was a uh, a train wreck I've never seen. If it, if it was legit. What's weird is I've heard it chalked up to being uh, the two of the people were drunk, and. Like but, every interaction they had. Yeah, you were drunk I mean, the entire I, Liberty I Forum. I mean, that's, that's possible. <laughs> it is. It I is. Did it last I mean, year. I was drunk at most of Liberty Forum and mm-hmm. high like all of the time, but I would I didn't walk up to strangers and ask them, you know, to open beers for me in the middle of a packed lobby. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. My interaction with with them was uh, they went to the Quill and they didn't have like uh, sponsors. So at the Quill, you have to. You have to get a member to kind of bring you in, and there's like a whole vetting process and stuff. But they were there just, oh, surprise, we're at the Quill. And wait, when, wait, no, they had a sponsor, but the sponsor wasn't a member. The sponsor wasn't a member, so it's not even a real sponsor. The sponsor is a fucking douchebag, which should be well known. He, he, I think, had a genuine misunderstanding. No, uh, I think he's just actually a fucking douchebag. If dumbass. we can have this talk, I don't know. No, nah, I. I'll, I'll go ahead and avoid it. I'm how, just saying. How can okay. you accidentally think that you were a member of a private club? No, 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 no. That you no. Liberty are Forum a is happening. Forum, yeah, in their defense, Liberty Forum is going on. Um, a lot of out of towners are coming through. So that gives you the right to come no. over. No, they want to show property. people the quill. Like, he's just an entitled little prick. He knows that that's not his. He knows he can't do that. He knows that's not his territory. All right. Well, I know better. This That's a separate issue entirely. And I. I Whatever. Anyway, I continue. think it was a genuine mistake. Anyway, but these two people, when they were asked to leave the club, uh, were uh, giving uh, the person asking them to leave a hard time. Actually, there were a bunch of like a crowd of people asking them to leave at one point. Yeah, and, and apparently they were pretty the much saying, "Oh no, what, you know, what are you, the state?" And they're like trying to troll. I mean, the person who brought them there then wasn't cooperating either. If he was cooperating, which I was, well, there, he, he's, so he doesn't here. control them. I so. mean, but he brought them. Yeah, which was a big mistake as well. You don't bring someone you don't know to like an activist club or an activist that center. you're not even supposed to be at. Yeah. So that would kind of just, I mean. Well, he could have got guested there. He's just inconsiderate. I probably would have guested him. Yeah, but you didn't. He could ask you, but did. Although you? I think I was guesting two other people, and that's my maximum. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. Anywho, um, besides that, inc- well, that's actually. Well, like- what do you take away from that? Like. Well, our interaction that we had with them. Uh, I find. Well, go ahead. Talk about your interaction with them. Uh, 
they came across as like really dark, dark people. Um, they just came up to us and they were like, "What are you doing for liberty?" It was just really awkward. They yeah. didn't. They, they were trolling you. They, it, yeah. it felt like they're trolling in person. And then they, didn't they were feel like, like "Can you staters. open this beer for me?" And then that, I yeah. thought that and was really weird. And they wouldn't say what their names were. Yeah. Like, like I introduced myself, and they wouldn't introduce them, which I thought was really odd as no. well. Um, There's a large difference between trolling someone online and then coming at them in real life and trolling them. Yeah. Right. What what I found I found fascinating is that you had, especially in multiple different groups, because whenever something like this happens, I would like to, I would say that most free staters, not most, there are free staters that are, let's face facts, a little paranoid about the Fed. All right, that someone's the Fed or like someone's infiltrating. Or, I always feel like somebody's watching, watching me. me. Uh, but uh, in this situation, I mean, you in this situation, with the amount of uh, uh, interactions that they had with other people and all these other people giving testimony to this uh, fact, I found fascinating because literally these Facebook groups, which are pretty much have become like the uh, the uh, way in which you know major issues that happen are communicated. You know, these groups are literally become the uh, social fabric of the community, whether you like it or not. Uh, I found it fascinating that people of like completely different, you know, backgrounds, like people that never would really get along in person are all joining in together, like talking about like, you know, what their interactions were with this person, giving their testimony on the same thread. I thought that was kind of fascinating where like they're, you know, they're looking out for like, because they're in Keen right now. So it's kind of like, you know, everyone's going on in the Keen groups and like, hey, this is what happened to us over here. Fair warning. And it, I thought it was fascinating that Manch people are telling, you know, giving the Keeniacs, Keen people like, hey, here's a heads up. You know, this is what happened. Here's a heads up. I thought it was fascinating to see like an outreach. Like I viewed it as outreach. I kind of viewed it as like and, keeping communication. And then up. that person started to comment because apparently they stole. They stole. How you you come somewhere you're not allowed, and then you steal from the place and then comment. Well, yeah, they Sorry, stole. Sorry, I stole from you. They stole a cigarette. I'll send it back via FedEx. Do but, they? Do they? Even well, I think it? I think that they yeah. said they would FedEx like a cigarette. But or something. that's like admitting. Uh, look, that they look. Stole. No, I honestly, I don't think they stole that on purpose. I honestly, I mean, oh, they can't they're read? social faux pas. Why are you guys giving them such benefits of the doubt? Well, no, 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 no. Well, not, not everybody. The cigarettes are clearly labeled where they stole them from. So no. <laughs> I'm not giving them the benefit yeah, of the doubt. You said you guys. They're adults. Okay, they need to go, take then. some personal responsibility. If they can pack up and move across the country from Seattle, and why they didn't can they read a buy, sign Why didn't they just buy that cigarette when cigarette. they were confronted about it? Right. Hmm? Why didn't they just buy the cigarette because when they were confronted? Exactly. Exactly. Don't get me wrong. Like I understand how people can like screw up their first time coming around. But screwing but up every that, first yeah, impression yeah, exactly. you made? That was an epic <laughs> screw up. Like, we're a different kettle of fish, so like... You know, I always warn my friends if I bring them around, like, yeah, hey, but they're, this they're is how movers. This, this and this works. Now, they're like, already here, Did supposedly. they even visit? No, they're well, you tell me. I mean, I've never heard of them before. No, I've never seen them. And they, exactly. asked me, they asked to be guesting into the CAC today, and I was like... <laughs> wow, they did? I don't think so, yeah. They are definitely the fucking Fed. And, like, I, yeah, no, no way. Don't I don't think they're the Fed. I, no, I don't, don't think those they're No, I think that a Fed, if a Fed were to infiltrate... It would be someone like one of us that you win. One suspect. of us. Shire dude, probably. Who's it's probably the, me, yeah. Who's yeah. at the table? Who's in the room? See, can we talk about our secret Phoenix. mission? <laughs> no. We don't talk about secret missions, babe. Oh, That's man. why they're secret. Yeah, you can't uh, even. Missions. There is no secret mission, Secret guys. missions? What's a secret mission? I want to know. Well, we, we haven't told you yet. But I, I don't. <laughs> That's right. We have it. <laughs> Yo, we'll be able to keep it. Yo, if you actually showed up on time, then, then maybe you, you would be you it. You wouldn't know about all our secret missions. I have no plans. I do not have a cupcake in my hand right now. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. I, it's I, not your birthday. <laughs> Whatever, Renee Cake. Oh, well, I, I personally <laughs> think back to the who's the Fed thing. I think we should always be aware. And especially these people were so negative And they just seem, I mean, all of you guys seem odd from outside looking in. Like, not going to lie. But these people just really rubbed everyone they met So you're, the you're trying way. to say that they were weird for even being a free state. Exactly. Because <laughs> that's exactly. pretty damn weird. But saying something, when the when the fringe of society is like, whoa, who are these guys? Like, <laughs> And, I mean, 
I've met people maybe that aren't so are socially awkward, super socially awkward, and I still never got this feeling that you know they troubled me. They These people really gave me this feeling that they troubled me, and I don't know. Now the question is, can they repair this? Can they? Can they? If they're actually on, if they're serious that they they moved here from wherever, they were like George Bush though. They managed to just piss everybody off. <laughs> Fucked up everything. Oh man, it would it would take quite a bit of backtracking and apologies, I think, for me to even consider hanging out with them. Yeah, me too. And I'm not bringing them to the grill anytime soon. Not at all. Yeah. Anyway, um, we'll be back after this. More social faux pas coming up. Welcome back. This is a Rebel Love Show. I'm Shire Dude. We got Rob Mathias in the house. Yo. Endless Edition Sirens. Hey, yo. And uh, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite people uh, showing up at Liberty Forum. Since we talked about our bad me? experiences. Was it me? Well, uh, one of my pe- favorite people besides Favorite Renee, politicians. Besides Renee Cake. Yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> Vermin Supreme. Yes. The man himself showed up uh, in a boot nice, and all. Boot nice and all. suit, but yeah, you got to have and the like boot. like 20 ties. Yeah, yeah, he wears a lot of ties. A suit and Red ties. Supreme is the fucking man. Oh, he's amazing. Actually, I just saw a really funny YouTube video with him, which I hadn't seen before, where he sang a song called Demons. Um, if you look up Vermin Supreme Demons on YouTube, you might be able to find it. You might have to look at his Facebook page for it if you can't find it on YouTube immediately, because I think it was relatively new. Anyway. Yeah, I haven't um, seen it before. I have seen the one where he he starved to death at Dogefest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you look up Dogefest, yeah, that was that was that was fascinating. Hold it. Hold it. Dogefest. Yeah, he you went to Doge, Doge. He Fest? went to Dogefest, and Doge he Fest? he couldn't buy a goddamn hot dog yeah. because every vendor took Doge. Yeah. He didn't even know what it is. Oh, Sh- poor Shire God. dude is the Doge trillionaire over there. He's the Doge cum laude. Don't worry, Shire dude bought him uh, a, a hot dog with some Doge. <laughs> Wait, no, did you guys see him outside? Oh, I think it was Dobby Barker's table and he got on a megaphone and was like screaming the Star Spangled Banner Hendrix what? style. What? He just got what? he got on a megaphone oh, he and did he that? was like <laughs> Wow. Is that is that considered violence? And and oh, you it didn't was awesome. and you didn't record this on your phone because This was at Porkfest, I right? I was in the Free Talk Live studio, but I was laughing. Oh, this at Porkfest or is this at uh at Liberty Forum. Pork fest. Oh. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Did anyone yeah. catch that? He's been no. known he's been known to do that. You could probably find a video of him on YouTube doing that too. It was like It's one of my favorite things. One of the best moments Vermin in my Supreme life. Supreme is that. just Shire dude of the future. Well, yeah, he's one of my biggest inspirations, definitely. I um I want to I want to other boot one day. I don't know. I don't know if I'll do a boot or you'll something. Be, you'll be boot buddies. Maybe yeah. I should like. You'll wear his other boot on your head. Have a cane and a monocle or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly. I can see you with the monocle. A monocle? Yeah. I, yeah. Think that would be I nice. would need to fix one of my eyes. <gasps> I could get LASIK on just one eye, and then I'd <laughs> be half as expensive. And yeah, I'd have to get like a thick rimmed monocle too. It'd have to be like a hipster monocle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, we we ended up taking a picture with Vermin Supreme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which which is, is activism. Cause now he's now there's a there's prison. a group on Facebook called Selfies with Vermin yeah, Supreme. Ke- I think Kev- did Kevin Kevin of Air Twenty Three make that. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Coolest. It was the it's one of the coolest Facebook groups I've seen in a really long time. It's a cool concept. Yeah, it was just selfies with uh, Vermin, Vermin Supreme. Supreme. And uh, it's just posted with it's just nothing but posts but posts with other people taking pictures with Vermin Supreme. Uh, He's an awesome dude. Yeah, we did we did campaign work for him while at Liberty Forum. If I were to ever vote, I'll ver- vote for Vermin, Vermin Supreme 2016. Well, for ponies. Uh, what else? Zombie uh, power. Free ponies and free zombie ponies power. Not and to zombie. mention. Uh, Good dentistry. Yes, vermin Supreme. Well, yeah, he's got the the four planks, which is a free pony for every American. Um, zo- uh, zombie preparedness for the impending zombie apocalypse. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, fully funded time travel research nice. and mandatory toothbrushing laws. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I he's the guy for me. Vermin I mean, that's Supreme, that's a solid platform right there com. for a presidential run. Anyway, yeah, actually, vermin supreme twenty sixteen dot com is his website. Um, we should. I don't know. I'll, I could post up like a bitcoin because he's got a bitcoin address for donation campaign donations right now i don't know if it's on his website he yet. needs to take my idea 
What was your idea? idea? Because so many people post photos of themselves with uh, Vermin Supreme. I mean, everyone does with his with his uh, his boot on there. He needs to slap on his QR code for his presidential campaign onto the boot. So, and every time someone takes a photo of him, they could mm-hmm. donate when they see that photo on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or mm-hmm. wherever that photo may land. Oh, babe, you're an innovator. I like it. We could just wear it like bling, like just oh, wrapped around yeah. his neck. Oh, just like a giant, a big QR code bling. QR we gotta make it time. creative somehow. It just can't be like overt. A tie, yeah, yeah. Uh, Liberty Phoenix point on that. That'd be cool if you had a uh, QR code maybe on his tie, just a t- or a whole tie was just like QR code. covered in QR codes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a cool kind of custom project. He needs to get that done. Some sort of QR code on him so people can uh, <laughs> scan hi- scan him somewhere on his body to uh, donate <laughs> to his cause. Speaking of the virtual world. Uh, I met so many people I had been seeing on Facebook, and I it was hilarious. Uh, people were coming up to me and say, "Oh, it's such a pleasure to meet you! Like I've been following you on Facebook and blah blah blah." And I was like, "So cool, man!" This is your first interaction with a bunch of people that have been following her on Facebook. And this is the thing with me. I'm a I'm a very humble person. I think so. I I worked at the registration table of the whole Liberty Forum. Like one reason because I like to help, and the other reason I wanted to meet everyone who came in and make a good impression. And so that's what I did. So if you see me at the registration table, shout out to you. You made my Liberty Forum as well. R- Renee, what's it like when so many people know who you are? Sorry. I see you what? grinning and like <laughs> you're like grinning to her like saying this. No, I I mean I knew who you were before you got here, so No, I've been like completely ignoring you guys. I've been oh. like sexting for the past five minutes. What was the question? Wait, did you say oh. sexting? Did you say sexting? <laughs> yeah, kinda. What's she that? is sexting oh. during the Rebel Love Show. What how exactly do you sext? I, I didn't see any nipples make an appearance exactly. while you were sexting. Well, not like, not like it's only sexting. sexting if you see a nipple. No, that's not true. It's it's just, it can be sex- dirty words. It can be dirty no, words. it's only sexting no, I don't if think you that's see a nipple. True. I don't think no, that's true. Re- Renee's creative. She can probably come up with some fun stuff to say. Can you read some of it for us? No. Oh, do you have anything to share with the what class? Would you say, I would like to smother you in cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no. And eat it off of you. He knows who he Renee is. Cake free love. Oh, snap. He knows who he is. He better be tuned in at least. Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's writing to me right now. So. Okay. Well, but, tell him um, to join yeah. the chat. What was the question? <laughs> what is it like the when first people time when come people recognized you? you? We had we had a fan oh. base because we did a show too, and people were there, guys. I know you had you had, you guys had a lot. You guys had a pretty big audience. It wasn't that big, but it was... for for a pod for a podcast that doesn't exist as a podcast yet, <laughs> you guys had a pretty damn big audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, don't want I mean, it's a YouTube like show. It's not and a podcast. And people yet. came up to us after and was like, "You're hilarious." We had the um. Allie Havens and Ellen Ball. Fuck yeah. I finally yeah, got my wish. Fishy got his wish. Yeah, we had that a- I got ALP Allie. reunion. That was ALP a great reunion on my From what fucking I saw. show. It was, it what? Was, it was Me and great. Derek J were in the audience watching. Yeah. How awesome is that? You yeah. guys got to tune in as soon as I get that video, you know? God damn it. I've been running. <laughs> yeah, get the video up. But because I made it, okay, I'll make this call again for anyone who didn't, well, has not yet heard my show. I'm calling out to state reps. State reps, if you're listening, you should propose a bill that will allow emancipation for minors. And watch my show to find out why. The Liberty Forum episode of Seditious Siren. Dun, dun, Check it out. When that comes out. Yes. Hey, don't Which don't get me wrong. Wednesday. I'm being a I'm being a slacktivist here and a half. I haven't even released last week's episode. Well, on the three that we recorded at Liberty Forum. Do you do you feel like it's your duty to release content? Yes. Yes. Let me tell you, I, I told, I remember warning you before you started this. All right. I warned you. This sucks the life out of you having to, oh, you, you are, a, you, no, no you will always, me, baby. you'll always be posting content for the rest, as long as you're doing this, you have to do it over and over and over. Rebel Up Tuesdays is where it's at, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. 
And I want to share an experience that uh, I had at Liberty Forum. Now, this, has, this doesn't happen all the time. Though you would think that does in my life living in the Rebel Love Studios. Uh, however, while there, I walked into a Shire Dude episode. Most likely. I, I, who knows? Maybe it will, maybe it won't be. It felt like one. <laughs> All right. Only only this man knows uh, whether or not that will be the case. I was there, camera hot. And oh, I know. Man. I know. It was Shire Dude galore. <laughs> okay. So I, we had just recorded an episode with uh, which the audio on that is going to be horrible, um, FYI. But we had recorded an episode with Davi Barker and Jeffrey Tucker at the same time, which is a weird mix. It's just such a weird, crazy mix. <laughs> They'd never, uh, I, I believe, they've never done a thing together. Yeah, and it was our, our show first. Yeah, it was kind of it was. It wasn't that great of an episode, but it was a cool thing. And we actually ended up I talking. Liked it. it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. I um, think they had a lot of similarities that they kind of like fleshed out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the uh, the big thing with it, though, well, the one thing that was kind of cool with the show too was that we uh, um, we talked about polyamory with uh, Davi Barker and uh, Jeffrey Tucker, which is kind of crazy. Uh, anyways, well, yeah, which kind of I feel like got brushed under the rug pretty quickly. Yeah, like. Um, I think Jeffrey it. actually asked us, like, what does that have to do with liberty? And and I believe we gave a pretty good response, which was uh, something to the tune of if you own yourself and, you know, you can you can make your own personal preferences. I mean, liberty is all about personal preference and, like, whether or not you want to send either your kids you to public you school or... Either you own yourself or you don't. So right. It goes with your love life. What you want to put in your body. I mean, that, that <laughs> I mean, phrase I, includes penises, right? I, I think polyamory yeah. and liberty go great together. It's all about free love. To and, me... It, yeah, making that choice, like <coughs> it, it all it all ties in. Yeah, to me it's the same ideology. But anyways, so we're recording the show and literally I had to pack up my bag, my uh, laptop to record and immediately go to the other side of the hotel to do the uh um I did a polyamory talk at Alt Expo during Liberty Forum with none other than the artist formerly known as O Girl. Oh, wow. And I walked in a couple of seconds late too. So here I come walking through, and first of all, it was actually kind of packed. There was like 40, 50 people in that room, I think, at least. It looked like it. It wouldn't be 30. Uh, it was the biggest talk that I went to, I believe, yeah. Yeah, it was actually a, a surprise. I was expecting maybe five, ten of people. Of course, I went to three, so. <laughs> it was a, it was a, that was the biggest one I ever went to for all the talks, and that was one of two of them. No, three of them that I went to. Two, the other two, one of them was mine anyway, so on succession. Again, with O-Girl, but. Um, anyway, so we I walk in. And I'll be honest, we have not spoken like a month uh, at all because uh, of some differences. And uh, it was a, the thing was it was an arrangement that I, it was an agreement I made way back in like November, which in all honesty was like a shire year ago at least. All right, but you know what? I, I'm, I try to keep it professional as much as I can. So I went there, I did it, and uh, what was fascinating was both of us. We were like. I'll, I'll admit we kind of we were we were both super professional didn't let anything get between us but when we had one mic so we actually literally had to fight for that that mic to get a uh, word in edgewise and it was only a 20 minute talk uh but the uh entire time it felt like i was literally what's wrong for i was the mic was like a hot potato between them yes and every time like she or you would finish on like a really good point you like shove the mic at the other person, like, "Ha, ah, here, you know, top that, you know, like, <laughs> let's see what you say now." And and they were both doing, I think, pretty well, keeping a train of thought going. Uh, I mean, it was good. There was one part when that, when she mentioned that you guys were together, of course. <laughs> yeah, that part got a little awkward because everyone was like, yeah, um, oh, just, just, just. <laughs> yeah, because the whole when she said that, I was literally walking around her the whole time, pointing to the crowd, like just making a little tiny. Uh, inch figure with my fingers it was like a, a yeah it was, it, was, it was hilarious i was upset that she brought that up too to be perfectly and honest. i had i had to go to that talk and sit like in the front row and stare directly at you yes <laughs> well you know you didn't sit in the front row but well, i was a little disappointed I sat in, like the third row it was packed it was full in there wait you were you were in the talk yeah of course okay well what is the best thing that you learned from that talk what's your favorite thing they said mm. you know mine was what was yours? Always sync your Google Calendar with your Poly Partners. <laughs> it's absolutely just imperative. That got, that got a chuckle, but you know what, folks? 
That's true. <laughs> All right. You sh- My and, favorite part of the poly talk was Lauren saying how her and Robert were in the same poly circle for a while. Because <laughs> it was so funny because these people don't even know the half. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like, are ridiculous, man. Like, Jesus, like, hey, you're gonna go full, man. So, you know, don't uh, don't be judging no, us I'm on this. Not. I'm just not Polly, man. I'm not. <sighs> Sorry. Not yet. That's you fine. Know, I'm not Polly. Okay. Yeah, he's not Polly. He's been in Polly circles, but he's not Polly. Someone called how you do, a how the fuck does that work? I wouldn't consider myself Orthodox Polly, at least. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, yeah Who was it? I don't know, newbie zero six. Oh, he Props, loves newbie. me. Newbie sixty six. Newbie sixty six loves chat. me. He's he's what makes me go into the chat every time. Like yeah, you. he is he's the all around chat. He's like you're a douche. You're not a douche. Props, you're so sweet. newbie. Yeah, he's a total uh, douche. Newbie, what are you talking about? Him? Newbie lib. What is what's his name? Newbie sixty six. Newbie sixty six. Leave my boyfriend alone, okay? No, you tell him. I'll, I'll get sixty six. You put him in his place. Wait, he wait, needs wait. to be knocked down a peg. Yeah, and you've got your conversion rate what? for Shire years totally why, backwards, why, dude. Why Just saying. Why are you hating on Rob? Because you you hate on you hate on the boys. The haters. Do you have any haters yet, Anne or Renee? Yeah. I, I mean, no, I, so I have hate on you. Okay, maybe I, I should have just asked one of them. I know, Jesus. <laughs> Let's start with Anne. I, I Any have, haters? <laughs> I have sexual fans who ask me to tie them up. That's not a um, hater. What? Yeah, and they're like, oh, yes, mistress, I would like for me to tie you, for you to tie me up and, like, dominate I'm me. I'm that I'm one of her fans, Renee. Don't look at me weird. Oh. And... <laughs> <laughs> and even on a 420 flyer, everyone's like, damn. Okay, I guess it's not a hater, but I just had one. shout out to you oh, guys. What the Keep fuck? up the fantasies. Okay, What's what were you saying? With you guys? I only had one guy <laughs> who ever wanted to tie me up, and like, we were starting to get it on. He's like, oh, I'd love to tie you up. And like, right there, I was just like, whoa. Well, did he whoa. say it in like a, I'd love to tie you up and Slow rape you, you or kill no. you type of so, way? So, like, yeah, he's like, I'd love to tie you up and fuck you. But I'm like, oh. whoa. But, slow your ropes there, but buddy. consensually. How slow does he? How slow do you want the ropes? Um, so slow <laughs> that I can run out of the car. Well, that's uh, not very. Uh, I was in a car a garage. It's not very sub of you. Oh wait, hold on. You were in a car in a car garage when he said <laughs> okay, this. What? Okay, we uh, we fucked in my car. And we couldn't find a good place to, like, go out, so we just went into my garage. But, like, I felt the need to go in and tell my roommates, like, hey, if you hear my car running in the garage, don't come look for me. Like, I'm not trying to kill myself. Just, like, beware. I'm getting it on in the garage. Don't mind me. I'm okay. That's why you didn't get tied up. Okay, I just well, don't no. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Luckily, I just didn't have anything on me to, like, get tied up with, but I was like... Well, now, no, okay. He, that, he was like, no Samwise Gamgee is what that, you're saying. That's a little awkward. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. That guy was fucking hot, like fucking okay. Tamale fucking Topeka. I don't even know. Tamale Topeka? <laughs> but this is the hot thing, guys. I, I don't know. I feel like guys always want me to be a dominatrix, and I am not really... A dominant. Oh, you're a neutral. You s- yeah, that's yeah. what I am. I'm totally. I mean, yeah, you're... I mean, I guess I am. I guess I am neutral. Yeah, Rob, no. what, what would you say? You are totally dominant. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. No. I want to be. Well, I, ha- he, I can't he be wants with you. To be, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, Rob is a sub. Like, no, I tied what? him up and shoved dildos in his ass. Oh I went, man! Wow. Oh, oh my God, that eight-inch dildo with a fucking <laughs> face! Uh, <laughs> what do you think oh I do God, with that dildo? <laughs> wow, that did not happen. Folks. <laughs> all eight inches. Uh, find out. We're all oh, eight inches. Yeah, find out how, so how many inches did we get. Oh my god, that's Marcel's. (laughs) (laughs) Marcel Fontaine's. Uh, Find out. You won't, because it did happen. Next, on Roblox. Roblox.
Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. This is our uh, last segment here before the uh, end the show. And I just wanted to take the moment, this opportunity, if uh, Cody is listening of Off the Air Live. Um, he ditched us, him and Melinda. He ditched me. He ditched Shire Dude. He ditched Liberty Phoenix. Yes. He, I, Liberty Phoenix sent his very first snap, Melinda B, via my phone <laughs> to Cody O'Connor, telling him to get his ass to our party for uh, Liberty Forum. He probably heard there was going to be an ice luge there, and he just knew. <laughs> <laughs> he knew there was trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, man, I, I would have bought them drinks and stuff. I, and food, I was so like, looking forward to seeing They would have had so out. much I know. fun. I really enjoyed meeting them, though. They were very nice people. I actually, I had the privilege to give them, like, a small tour down Elm Street, which, if you don't know, Elm is, like, the, like, the hub of, like, the kind of food scene in Manchester. Like, there's a big line of restaurants and all the awesome bars. I mean, there's better bars off of Elm Street. But um, I got to walk them down the street and point at places and, like, you know, that's the good, like, late-night food and that's the good this and that. Yeah, yeah, you're their uh, tour guide. For yeah, man. Trying to pay it forward, you know, because this really awesome guy gave me a tour during my first Liberty Forum. I'm glad you're paying it forward <laughs> because I've paid it forward to them on that same goddamn tour, and yet they are still not here. You move from the other side of the continent. They live an hour and a half away. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right. They can come down for the weekend. They, they live. Do that. They live in Maine. I know. Maine. Tisk. 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 Yeah. Tisk. 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 Maine. Yeah. Uh, the Cody yet by uh, the trigger and the Cecilia. Yeah. So what yeah, Cecilia, Cecilia. Cecilia still has a deal, I believe, with Melinda that if she moves to Manchester, then Melinda will come as well. Oh, they're good friends. And if Melinda goes, Cody goes. So it's kind of a domino effect. Yeah. Yeah. Why haven't we triggered the Cecil one? Well, get, <laughs> well you do that. I'm trying. <laughs> get her out of Keene. She's not going No, she's Keen. mine. I don't want to. Get think, Renee out of Keene. Take one for oh, Renee. Please, take one for the team. It's come a on waste now. Of land. Come to Manch and we'll all be happy together. No. We'll take over. We'll run this town. No. I'd love to have Renee out in Manchester. I know. Yeah. Look, we can hang out every day. And I already think as if you're in Manch you anyways. Day. I mean, you spend like at least every other weekend here. Well, not anymore. I mean, she doesn't love us anymore. Y'all have shared custody of me. Yeah, that's true. No. We kind of do. <laughs> and you Thank can bring you, Jazzy every time because Ash the studio cat and Jazz the studio dog go like her on Facebook they're friends they're best friends don't now. don't do that people just like Ash no, no <laughs> fuck you. you like Jazzy too because Jazzy is a cop block dog she's a Liberty in North Korea supporter she does she, activism all the time what does and, Ash do for Liberty and she's a good Samaritan she was That's in a true. nursing home the other day where my aunt is like currently on her deathbed and like my aunt wasn't really responding to anything because she's like dying but um, she was responding to the dog. She was like paying the dog. She didn't really say anything to Aww. us, but she was like paying the dog, and Jazzy made her feel better. And tons of other old people. Wow. Ooh, wow. A cool thing that I wanted to share. I mean, I don't really state marriage, bleh, not my thing. But this old couple that I saw, they were sitting out by the door. Um, this old lady was in a wheelchair, and then this other old guy was on the couch, just kind of, you know, kind of holding her hand. And uh, we were out in the lobby, and he offered my cousin a seat. She was with me. And we all got to talking, and he proceeded to tell us about how his wife has Alzheimer's, and she couldn't even communicate. Like, it was pretty shitty, but it was also cute because he's like, oh, we've been married for, like, oh, I think he said, like, 62 years oh, or something so like sweet. that. And he, like, regardless of the fact that she can't even speak to him right now and probably doesn't even know who he is, he still goes every day and just holds her hand and just sits with her. That's so sweet. Wow. That's nice. such a love story. That's really I cute. cried. I walked away and I cried. Wow. Oh. So I don't. I don't think anyone, mostly in the Free State Project, believes in state-approved marriages. But would you guys have some sort of ceremony to yeah, I want express my day love? in a white dress. God damn it! Like I grew up in the wedding industry. Industry. I want my flowers and I want my big rock. I want to oh. have to struggle to lift my hand. Sorry, dude. Do you want your white dress? Wedding? I'm. I'm so anti wedding ring. It's not even funny. That is that is so unfair. Okay. I'd, I'd yeah, wanna, well, I want to. I want to get matching tattoos. I want to get matching. See, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> see, matching tattoos. That's progressive and cool. Like that's like new. You know, I, I like that. I would do something. Like see, that. I, I would. I would rock multiple rings. 
Yeah, Rob will have like. But I want to get married. Be, I'll, well, I'll, I'll you're talking about myself. a wedding band, though. You're not talking about a big freaking diamond that's I worthless know. that you're gonna pay a ridiculous amount for because uh, you love someone. It's not yeah. worthless. It's not worthless. But if you why love can't some- women just have bands? I mean, if you love someone, have some equality. Buy people. a rock. Buy me a rock, man. I mean, I do. I I want my every girl wants their day in the sun. Uh-huh. All their friends to come look at them walk their in a white photos. dress. Yeah, I think that's sweet. Just, yeah. Just, uh, just saying here. You just want what's been sold to you. That's what you want. No, no. because it would be totally different. First of all, it would be so hippie. W- w- would you call it a <laughs> wedding or would it be like a life ceremony? No, it'd be, I mean, it'd be a would, love ceremony. I a love probably, ceremony. Uh-huh. I would okay. call and it a be, wedding. But... It'd be in a hill in Vermont and we all sit in like a semicircle and um, smoke hookah or pot. And there's like a shaman, which is shy dude. And he walks over and he sprinkles like <laughs> daisies on everyone. And then we say how much we love each other each other and, and then we kiss and then all oh my our gosh. friends clap and then oh. we release the dubs and that's it can we get oh. can we get dumbo gets mad to play the reception <laughs> I, tell you right I now, was I'm, gonna say back to reality <laughs> I'm, I'm putting this at, this one at the end in uh in my personal vault i'm gonna remember that oh yeah. noted uh, what would what would your version of that wedding be rob <laughs> my, <laughs> my Not wedding is a yeah. love ceremony your love ceremony my love ceremony I don't. I, I don't know. If What's it gotta about. have? What's that one thing? It's gotta be that one it thing be traditional you've always all. dreamed of since you were a little girl. <laughs> since I was a little girl, <laughs> uh, a young black girl in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I don't have a a, a dream wedding. No. no. That's not my thing. I'm sorry, folks. I have a dress picked out. I have my dress on hold. I mean, I, I smoking, have looked at dresses. I, I want to look like a Lana Del Rey. Would there be a would there at, at this love ceremony? Would there be like a, a smoking like tradition in the beginning of it? Yeah, that they'll be sitting in a semicircle smoking. Y'all just want to be high. <laughs> of course we time. do. The <laughs> cake would be like special cake. Oh, I'll have make my own cake. cake. We'd have mushrooms. And Hot wedding cake. For the reception, it'd be like a tripping fest. Can I make Whoa. your cake? So it'd just be like we get a big tent or dome or something in Vermont and like. And get Mateus to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll speak while we're getting baked. We can just do this at Pork Fest and make the gay, big gay dance party like our wedding reception. Yeah. Well, I want a Pork Fest wedding. So I, I mean, that would be awesome. You would have to do but, it at this coming Pork Fest because this is the last big gay dance party coming up. Wait, this is the last one. This is the what? last one, then they're retiring That's it. a lot of pressure. Uh, someone will pick up the it's mantle. That's, like, that's, that's a like a lot of pressure. And I would like, you know, for this to be planned and asked Dude, properly. Dude, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. It is not the last <laughs> big gay dance party. I already have my freaking outfit planned. I have that for shit next planned year by too? January. <laughs> no, I'm already You're working on man. next year's. You don't even know. Like, when there's an event coming up, I have my outfits picked out, like, Months in advance. I have my Halloween okay. outfit picked out. I start I, that shit was done by August. Our one one thing because we're run out of time. We're run out of time. One more thing. So if you are a student and you're listening to this show, could you pl- if you would like to receive a special discounted uh, price for Pork Fest, you can email me at seditioussirens at gmail dot com. So remember, email me your name and your school. If, I would like you to have a Facebook so I can like see if you're real or not, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'll hook you up, so let me know. What kind of information do they have to send you? Like their name and blood just, type? Just, yeah, their name, blood type, um, what, you know. A dick pic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta see if it's bigger than the eight inch dildo. Larger ones will get a bigger discount, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So um, please don't send me dick pictures, but it's a dick No, I get the email, I get the email com. to send me dick pictures. And where can I also, uh, where can they also find yet? Oh, that. They can also find us at seditioussirens.com and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And You guys have a website for real? Well, uh, it's in the works. We right have now. a domain name. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, we have dot com slash seditious sirens, people. And Shire Dude, where can you find you at? It's all at shiredude.com. And there's a new series of videos coming soon. Um, I'm going to give it a week tops um, from Alt Expo that I'm editing and they're actually going to be out and they're going to be coming out in a big playlist and it's all the speeches that you wanted to see and missed and then they were never uploaded. Wait, are you talking oh from previously? This is this, actually from not this from Liberty Forum? not from this Liberty Forum. This is from the prior year. Oh. And so all of these videos that have been like archived are going to be released into the wild. Well, before you do that, release my talk at uh, Liberty Forum first. And then I'm actually ahead. working on your talk from 2013 right now. Oh my God. So before we leave, can we all I promise thought... not to commit any more ice luge violence? 
<laughs> and I slew violence. I can't do something I haven't already done. I have did never done that. Did you sign a contract? I never did it. So I can't, I can't say I've never do that thing I've done before. Anyways, uh, you can find Rebel Love Show at rebellloveshow.com. Go like us on Facebook and uh, go uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Peace. Send me all your doge. <laughs>